Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up Tom's light bulb. This is from Tom Shadley out of Naples, Florida. This is one of his favorite flies. Wish I'd be down there throwing this fly right now. We can't get down there with the COVID this year. So anyway, uh, I'm going to show you how to tie this fly. And it has uh, been really one of the go-to flies for us for the last few years for sure. And uh, fished down there a few years before I even realized how good this fly was until Tom told me it was one he'd use it a lot. So I, I tried it and I was just totally amazed. I, I, tricked, I added one other ingredient that Tom didn't have. I, I like uh, something I've seen at the fly shop and I tried tried another material on here. So I'm going to go over the materials. Like I said, here we go with the size 2 saltwater hook. You can go down to probably a size 4. I tie a lot of ones in a different style hook, a little smaller gape on it. Uh, bead chain eyes, I'm going to use some large bead chain eyes. I'm going to use some uh, rock hard nylon here, just some 25 pound for the for the uh, weed guards. I added those, Tom never had those on either. And uh, I like to have weed guards on all my flies. Underneath we're going to use some, this is fluorescent pink, this glow in the dark actually, this material there for the underbelly. The, um, we're going to use some medium Palmer chenille in front of that uh, underbelly there. Then we're going to use some baitfish emulator. That is material that I found to be very, very good on this fly. Uh, this comes in different colors. I've seen this in different shops and I bought it in different colors. And it is amazing stuff. It's really pricey, but it, it's worth it. And then Tom's main ingredient here, of course, would be the Polar Flash, the Marir, uh, Mirage Opal. Very, very fishy colorations of that. You see that in the water, you can see it now, it looks so good. And then on the front we're going to use some crystal chenille, this kind of white uh, crystal. You can use straight crystal too if you have it. So let's get to it, put a hook in the vise and uh, tie this up. It's a quite a slender fly. You can tie it with half as big and it would, it would look after those uh, nice little glass minnows. We're going to tie the just bead chain eyes. We really don't want weight on it. We don't want it to jig. We want this fly to fish fairly shallow. And uh, it's basically doesn't add much for weight. It just kind of levels that hook out a little bit so it's riding straight. Just going to exit in behind. I'm going underneath there. I'm using some very strong um, flat thread. Uh, it's very, very heavy f flat thread. When I go to some of these streamers, I can lean on it, can't break it. Okay, and now I'm coming back in here just behind the eyes a little bit. And we'll take some of that glow in the dark pink. This is a flashaboo, glow in the dark. I'm just going to tie it on the bottom. I could actually. And then on one swoop, and I have uh, held it in the middle. Okay. I'm going to have that basically come to the bottom of the shank. I don't want it too long. Just cut it right about so. Go through the bend a little bit, it's fine. If it flares on me a little bit like it does there, yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't mind that at all. That really looks good when it's wet too. Wait for that cement to harden there and that'll stay straight. Okay, now we're going to come in with the uh, the medium Palmer chenille. This is such a bright fly, very, very bright. I wasn't sold on when I seen it right away either until Tom recommended a few years later. And boy, it's been a good one. Got so many snook on this fly. And we just build ourselves a little bit of a collar in there. Gives the fly a little shape. Okay. Very good. And then uh, he used some other flashaboo, some glow in the dark flashaboo. It was kind of the straight, like uh, this flashaboo, but it was a, a more of a white, kind of a pearl, glow in the dark. And I know his thought on the glow in the dark product there was 
uh, when you fish it at night and if you want some big big snook the big fish are feeding under the cover of darkness and if you want some glow in the dark flies that's the ones are gonna they're gonna target those for sure and that's why I use that I'm just gonna sub this out I'm, I'm fishing uh, during the daylight with this one I'll just say so you could put some of that glow in the dark materials in there I'm not knocking Tom's tie at all and this is nice soft material what I'm going to do is kind of pull it so it's not so it's tapered in both ends I tie it in here I'm going to get a nice tapered body oh, I want to pull that back a little bit more I don't want it equal I want the bottom section to be a little bit <coughs> longer there we go and then I get more of a taper and if you want a longer fly just pull it back a little more there you go you can adjust it however you want it's about right Remember that oak right there that that should do it yeah that looks good if you're not sure about that you can add a little more I'm going to come in with the top here with this more, uh, Polar Flash Mirage Opal and that's going to even give it a little more length and there again I'm going to just stagger these ends a little bit and that's going to come much longer now I'm going to get my top and this is really bright Call it the light bulb. Yeah, as he developed quite a name for this fly, he told him the story about the Belize. He'd you know, smile from ear to ear, and, and rightfully so. We all we're all quite happy with it. And so Tom, you've done a great job here on this fly. He's got T-shirts in the store with a light bulb on the back and caps and all kinds of things are promoting. It's it's a great one. It's it's becoming very well known. So I just X on the chenille there to basically cover the the um, dumbbell eyes there we go bead chain eyes not dumbbell but almost same thing I'm going to come in with some we're going to cut some of this stiff bite uh, tip it here now instead of tying it on the side I want to um, it's got a natural curve to it so I'm going to pinch it down so it bends around the hook a little easier. I can tie it in a little better when it's flat. So I'm just going to bring it in here the natural bend. If it was round it would kind of roll away on you a little. And then I'm just going to come in here really I can le I'm leaning on this pretty hard now. And I uh, put weed guards on all my flies now. I'm fishing down there in those mangroves and that because you want to get these flies dirty. You want to get them in those mangroves and get as tight as tight as you can to that those mangroves. That's where those big snook live. Where all those snook live there. there. And if you can. This won't get snagged up anywhere. And then I'll just trim it past the hook point a little bit. And there it is. Tom Shadley's light bulb. Very well done. It's a great fly. You're heading to the salt water. Tie some of those up. If you want to order some, Tom's tying a bunch of them down there. He can't keep up, but he'll sell you some. He's got them online or phone the shop. Mangrove Outfitters in Naples, Florida. Great people. They got a good shop down there too. You really enjoy going in there. Good country, you're going to have a lot of fun down there. Have a nice day. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.